I want to go back a bit because there you are, here from Saskatchewan, the British side, you went to Britain, came back, ignited the sort of Canadian idea and the Canadian telling stories and your relationship with the United States. And there you have a show called Billy Bishop, which does really well here and becomes a bit of an icon for us, about us, what it's talking about. And then you go to Broadway and then you go to the West End. So what was it like for you as this Canadian Eric Peterson now seeped in this point of view, at that point so, to go to Broadway? Well, I would say Broadway and the West End, Billy Bishop failed. In both places? Yes, but it failed because they were both commercial. They were the only commercial things. So, uh, we, I mean, the kind of theater I'm talking about is non profit, right? We, we come out of that, not out of the commercial thing. And the commercial thing has its own thing. Now, so you can argue it failed because of the way it was produced there, there wasn't enough advertising, because in many ways, my idea of the commercial theater is the biggest thrill is when you buy the ticket. That's it. You know, I got, I spent $400 for the Lion King, my God! You know, because once you go to the Lion King, buy my lights, what the hell did I spend all that money for? But that's me. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. So, so in those two situations, but, but it what... It failed commercially, though. It failed commercially. Okay, but I'm talking about Eric. Eric the artist, Eric the actor, Eric the person, who then ends up on a Broadway stage sort of the antithesis of what he'd spent a decade doing at home. And he ends up on the West End stage that you said you always, you did harbor those ambitions. Oh, no, no, no I'm, 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 I'm just, why I'm smiling is because I'm, I'm, I'm sure that I've given the impression of what a hard-ass kind of nationalist I am, that there is straightforward all the There's really nothing there? This was a total shame. No, but what I'm saying is, all the things that I'm talking about, self-loathing, colonial, I, in my own soul, also struggle with. I'm not saying that I haven't had my dream of being Brad Pitt and being that big and famous. So when we went to Broadway, yeah, there was part of me thought, Jesus, I'm going to walk right to Hollywood from here. We had the party at Sardi's. The party at Sardi's. This was at the end. And I was going, and I'm knee deep in f***ing people. Coming, wanting to touch me, being here, you're great, you're wonderful. I'm going, wow. <laughs> By 4 o'clock in the morning, they decided to close the show. Because the review had come out, the Walter Kerr review had come out, and it wasn't a money review. It was kind of a confused fucking review. So, but again, to, but I'd be a, I'd be a barefaced liar to say that I haven't also struggled with the, the, my own feeling about making it in England, being Sir Lawrence Olivier, or having him like me in some way, or Alec Guinness. I adore these guys in a, a way too. But again, I, I now go. That's a dead end, though, or dead ends for me. Right. What was really has allowed me, I, I, you know, to be what I am and to live the life as an actor that I've lived in the theater and the film and television I've lived, has been this specific thing about my own country and who uh, who the people around me are. And it's made me have. It's all the fun I've had. I may not have made a fortune. I've made a good living. It's a struggle. But, so, but I, let's be naughty. Say there was a money review from Walter Kerr, and say you ran for eight months. Well, I wouldn't you be talking to you right now, <laughs> would I, buddy? You'd be down, you'd have to come down, I'd be. I'd be William Shatner, for sake, man. Yeah. I'd be William Shatner. Do you think you would have spent your rest of your career down in the States? Uh, no you? question. I'd have <laughs> laughed it up. I'd be by the pool. I'd have women up to here. God, man. Cars. Oh, no. Do you think so? No. Well, it would never have happened to me either. Right. You know, it, it wasn't even the bad review. It wouldn't have happened to me because I wouldn't have had the creative, imaginative energy to, to do that. I mean, there are Canadians who have gone down there and have. And I would, you know, I, so I mean, I, I'm not, it's, it's not that I've just stayed here and you know, harbored my great talents here. I'm going to be a Canadian. I'm going to be a no, Canadian. I, I've been, at least, if I can say that, smart enough to go, this is where I have fun, in the sense of anything being great, when you're creating anything, is fun. It's full of terror, it's full of doubt, it's full of all those things. And we can talk about it afterwards, it's fun. But it's a, it, you know, it's a, it's, it takes, you got to be a hard son of a bitch and a manly and brave person to go ahead and do this stuff that we do. And it doesn't mean you're not going to be scared shitless a lot of the time and full of self-doubt and go this, but 
the one thing that I do cling to is that, no, it's the, what, going back to Paul Thompson watching Under the Grey Whack, that it's made sense as uh, an actor and artist to me to, to use the stuff around me. Now, just around me and, and concentrate on that. My greatest satisfaction is having people come up to me and have that sense of ownership, that I'm their guy. And the stuff that I've done is their stuff. That's so much more exciting. That's than, Oscar. That's Oscar from it's Oscar, Bass, right? or The street. country owns you in a way. Yeah, and street legal. And yeah. you know, and they go, hey, you're the jackass guy. I'm thrilled to death with it. Janet Wright always says I chase buses and got people to look at me because she didn't like it, but God bless her. She's, you know, I just think it's, and for me, that's the circle is completed, and I feel at home in part in a meaningful way that I've contributed. And as much as the farmer has, or the policeman, or the other, my fellow citizens. Now let's just turn that upside down for a moment, because you got a, a Governor General's Performing Arts Award. Yeah. And I didn't see it, but I gather that you went out with a camera on the street and asked people if people if they knew who you were or not. A it's lot a of people. Cam, it's at the. It's I on the National Film website now. I've got to see it. No, what I. What was that like? I mean, well, we're it was totally about street theater. And it was, what happened? Well, I mean, the, the notion was, because you're given two, you know, it doesn't have to be, it's not a commemorative little two-minute movie right. that the National Film, so it can be anything. So, um, Kevin McMahon, who directed it, and I, and, and uh, Dan, um, can't, the name escapes me from the NFP, great guys, the three of us were pushing yourself. And I started from a very bitter point, like going on, this is an yeah. occupied country, I think, yeah. things like that. I, and I wanted to self-emulate, I wanted to, you know, which isn't totally bad. Because for Canadian culture, I was going you to say, wanted the footage to self emulate yeah, you. Yeah, I was going uh, to your to Governor General's yeah, Awards yeah, performing yeah, arts thing. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And which I, again, yeah, I now. You have no William Lyon Mackenzie in you whatsoever. I, I, I gush to think because people do that for very serious things. And I would go, Canadian culture, maybe that's not quite on the same.